Good morning everyone and welcome to a new oil painting time lapse video and it is also going to be Studio Sessions Episode 8. Real quick before I begin the video, I just wanted to remind you guys that I'm having a 20% off sale at my website which ends on May 21st and the code is Mother's Day and everything is available for 20% off at happyd-artist.com so feel free to check that out if you have time. Today's conversation topic is about the different types of art careers that any artist can have. Um, this is something that over the years I have kind of experimented with on my own. Um, I haven't really, you know, gone to like any formal presentations or lectures or panels by um, a lot of professional artists. This is kind of information that I think I've gathered just purely from observation. So pardon me if the information is not completely correct or if you have a different angle on things. Um, this is just kind of what I like what I have collected based on my notes over the years of the artists that I have had the pleasure of knowing or working with or just being a fan of. So when I first began thinking about quitting my job and becoming a full-time artist and I first began becoming exposed to different art careers and started following a lot of different artists on social media. Um, the one type of art career that stood out that I thought was the only type of art career um, or the ideal type of art career was the one in which you have a very, um, I guess, wealthy um, collector base who was willing to shill out a lot of money to buy original paintings. So people who were willing to spend tens of thousands of dollars on one single painting. And I thought the mark of a successful art career is someone who can sell maybe a handful of paintings a year at one or two shows, um, sell out the show, and you know sell each painting for like ten, tens of thousands of dollars. That's the type of art that I kind of grew up being exposed to. Like you only hear of those kind of more famous, fancy artists who, um, you know, are able to create pieces that are in such high demand because they're so famous that they can just make a few pieces a year and sell them for a very, very high price to a very exclusive audience. Um, obviously, that type of career, while I do still admire a lot of artists who have this type of career, you know, most of the really famous artists you hear have this type of career, um, but I just don't think it's as easily attainable or as feasible, um, you know, for especially for a, for a beginning artist, you know, you're just kind of like, where do I even begin? Um, this type of career requires a lot of, in my opinion, uh, timing, luck, and you know just kind of pl playing to the taste and to the the needs of a wealthier crowd and if you happen to have an art style that the wealthier crowd doesn't really want or that doesn't really speak to a crowd that's willing to pay thousands of dollars for original art then you're essentially screwed because you know no like no one's gonna buy it and then you won't have any other options so um, if you are someone whose style isn't like modern art or something that, you know, just happens to attract a lot of people with wealth, um, there are still different ways you can make money. Um, there are many, many different types of art careers out there. So another one, um, I guess on the opposite end of the spectrum from the fine art original painting career is the social media career. So I'm not just saying that like you um, social media in the sense of like having a large YouTube channel or having a large Patreon or having a large Instagram, but also um, using that social media presence to sell lots of um, kind of more affordably priced, more easily attainable merchandise or books or stickers or, you know, prints that aren't too expensive. Um, a lot of artists follow this model. I think I'm definitely, um, or at least one, one major angle of my art career is this model, and that is marketing through social media um, and finding an audience for your work, not through being represented by a gallery or not through some exclusive inner network of wealthy people, but rather just through reaching a mass audience. So, um, you know, it, also I just want to say that these two are not mutually exclusive. Um, if you take an artist like James Jean, for example, who is one of my favorite artists ever, he is able to have parallel careers in both ends of the spectrum. He has sold out shows, he sells his paintings to very exclusive um, collectors for tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and also on the other side, he has a really successful Instagram. I think he's like 
over half a million, like maybe 700,000 Instagram followers. Um, he's able to sell lots of books of his art and they're about 30 to $40 a book. Um, he's He also, um, his prints range from, you know, like a collection of prints for 30 to 50 bucks or one really exclusive, large limited edition fine art print for, you know, 200 bucks. So his career really spans the entire breadth of what um, an art career could be like. And, and that's one of the things I admire about him is that he's so incredibly versatile. And his artwork speaks to a huge variety of people. They speak to the wealthy elite collectors and they also speak to kind of, you know, like a, the teenage comic book loving crowd who can only afford maybe a few stickers or a few postcards, but still are willing to support his work. And he also designed um, a few seasons for Prada. So his work was featured on the fabrics um, of the clothes and the purses for some of uh, Prada's collections, which is insane. I mean, he is just so versatile. Okay, I'm not gonna make this a James Jean fan, fan rant, but yeah, basically I'm just saying there's so many different ways you can make money off of your art and so many different things you can do if you have the skills. Um, if you're not someone who has a large social media following, because I know that's also, that comes with its own bag of kind of like needing luck and a little bit of timing to get right. Um, on, you know, on the same vein that not everyone who makes modern art or expensive looking art can find the success and reach the right audience to buy their work. Um, on the same vein, not everyone who maybe makes art that is is beautiful and has a great, you know, great talent, great social media skills, um, that it's not guaranteed that those people will end up with a large social media following either. Everything takes time, everything takes a little bit of luck and a lot of patience. Um, but if you, I think, if you have a small social media following, it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't be able to sell your work. Um, you can find a great middle ground. I, I know, or I've seen a lot of Instagram accounts where the paintings or drawings always get sold out at pretty good prices, you know, like an intermediate price range. And there are not that many followers. Um, and likewise, I've seen accounts with hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of followers who um, n rarely sell an, an original work or rarely do gallery shows. So it really, really varies depending on your particular skill set, your particular art style, and your particular audience. Um, and then I've also seen another type of art career is artists who do uh, workshops and teach classes in person, um, passing on their skills to students. So you don't have to work or be employed by an official art school or art academy in order to just hold a private workshop. So I've seen a lot of wonderful artists um, who, who also display in fine art galleries, who also sell prints, um, give exclusive, you know, week long or one day workshops where, you know, they, they do an extensive class and tell all of their trade secrets. So what I'm saying, or I guess the ultimate um, morsel I wanna leave you guys with for this video is, you don't ever have to feel pigeonholed into one art career or one type of way to earn money. Um, just because you see a certain type of career become the one that's like popular or romanticized in the media, um, or perhaps your idol has a certain type of career and you just want to emulate them, um, doesn't mean that you should corner yourself um, into only choosing someone else's career option. I think the best thing you can do, especially if you're just starting out, is to really pay attention to your audience, pay attention to their needs and their wants and what they're able to pay, what they're able to um, support you with, and kind of let your art career run its natural course. Don't force it either way. Um, I really don't think that just because you idolize someone, you should follow in their exact footsteps because they might have a completely different path than you were meant to have. And if you spend too much time trying to copy someone else, it really takes time away from, you know, devoting your your energy and your brain power into finding your own unique path and your own unique voice, which may ultimately be um, more successful and more better suited for you. So like, for example, with me, when I first started doing art, I thought that the only way to true success was to go the fancy gallery route and to find a nice small collector base who are willing to pay lots of money for my paintings. But then I discovered social media and that ended up working out so much better for me because I was able to reach a wider audience and people who couldn't afford original fancy paintings could still afford to support me and be a part of my art journey by buying prints. and 
you know, while I may not be as fancy as a lot of those really famous artists, like modern artists you read about in textbooks or modern artists, you know, whose work is hung up in like the homes of celebrities or whatever, I might not be as fancy or, or you know, rare as those people, but I love that I get to reach a wider mass and, you know, have my art be hung up in homes of young teens who aspire to be artists one day. So I just want to say that do not ever um, corner yourself into you know, becoming a certain type of art career or thinking that your art path is the incorrect one. Everyone has their own path. Everyone has their own timing, their own pace. So keep working hard, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, and before I end this video, I wanted to share very proudly these amazing entries for my April $1 coloring challenge. If you'd like to enter this month, pledge at least $1 at patreon.com slash happy Alright, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!